Hello Simmers and welcome to Amsterdam. We are in X-Plane 12 and for this video I would really like to show you the effect of the freeware packages X-Europe and the freeware ortho tiles uh, that they can have on the scenery in the simulator. Um, X-Plane 12 open beta was released, I think it was one or two weeks ago. I was dying to do a video on it but I just didn't have the time, it was too busy at work. Um, but now I have my holiday, so there's plenty of time to uh, make some videos, so that's what I will do. Uh, but in the meantime, of course, the main streaming channels have already displayed a lot uh, of x 12. So there's not much uh, use for me to, uh, to go over all that again two weeks later. So I thought it would be nice, uh, since there is a lot of criticism on the scenery in x 12, to do a video to show you what the, the effect of X-Europe and Ortho is on that scenery. So we are in Amsterdam, we are parked at uh, the eastern apron of Schiphol. This is the GA and the business jet um, uh, apron and down there is the uh, aviation police with the helicopters. Um, well, let's just say something about the scenery in general first. Um, of course, there's a massive um, difference in design philosophy between X-Plane and Microsoft Flight Simulator because usually people uh, compare the, the sceneries the default sceneries in X-Plane with the uh, sceneries that you get out of the box in Microsoft Flight Simulator and of course they are almost uncomparable uh, because in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator you just uh, log on to um, an, uh, like a network and you download the ortho uh, tiles for the area that you are flying currently over uh, whereas X-Plane um, they just give you a sort of basic scenery, they call it a plausible world. Um, and if you would like to further enhance that, that is entirely up to you. There is plenty of resources, but they are not investing in uh, the photoreal uh, uh, scenery that you get with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now the downside is the world out of the box doesn't look as good as in Microsoft Flight Simulator. But the upside is that the sim is reasonably uh, small, well, comparably small in uh, size, and that you can get all the systems, uh, all the files on your system. So that's a big plus. I mean, uh, if some uh, accountant at Microsoft decides it's not cost effective to run the scenery uh, servers anymore, uh, they can plug, they can just pull the plug, and you cannot use your simulator and all the hundreds or maybe uh, over. The course of time thousands of uh, dollars worth of scenery are just unusable uh, that's not uh, a danger or a risk with the use of x-plane you get all the files on your system and you can use it uh, as long as you have a rig to run it basically so there's a change in philosophy uh, or a difference in uh, philosophy and austin myers stated that uh, photogram the, the photo sceneries out of the box are not the top priority for the team at laminar it might be somewhere down the road in the future, but nothing to be expected soon. And that's not a big problem, uh, because with a little bit of effort, uh, you can really enhance the scenery in your sim. And the two packages that I use to do that, uh, well, first of all, of course, Ortho 4XP, but there's plenty of videos on how to create tiles and do that. So I'm not going uh, into that too deep. Uh, but the other package that is X Europe, um, and I would like to demonstrate in this video the effect that X Europe has on the scenery and especially on the autogen. Now, when you look at the uh, surroundings of Amsterdam in the sim, for instance, uh, here a bit further uh, to the south, this is runway 624, so here we are at the southwest of the airport. Now. When you look at this area, um, what strikes me is that the layout of the roads is highly accurate. You can really navigate with the real world road map uh, around the sim. The roads, they are just spot on, uh, as well as the streets. But if you look at the, um, the, the layout of the land and you compare that with the uh, footage in Google Maps, you can see there's a huge difference. The way 
that the land is um, displayed here that's basically not really Dutch um, and by that I mean that let me just go to a free view in the Netherlands uh, the landmark uh, what, what is really highly uh, characteristic of the of the landscape is the very rectangular fields and that has got something to do with the uh, types of soil that we have in the Netherlands and how uh, our ancestors used that soil and that has really shaped the terrain surrounding the airport and you get these highly characteristic like um, I think it's called peat in uh, in English um, where you this was basically very boggy terrain so our ancestors they dug up peat and they laid that to uh, dry in the sun and that created turf and they used the turf to um, to burn to warm their houses but you get these really distinctive long fields with lots of water surrounding it and then the part where the airport is that's actually a polder this used to be a lake or a sea uh, that was uh, dried using windmills and some steam uh, pumps uh, and this consists of clay and because this land was dried uh, it was artificially um, well basically designed so you got this very nice rectangular fields that were very easy for farmers to uh, yeah, to use to produce their their goods to grow their crops but anyway as you can see in Google Maps the terrain itself doesn't look anything like the terrain in X plane 12 and if you want to tackle that bit then you have to install an ortho tile but if we take a look at the autogen Let's just go here. This is the town of Hofdorp. I used to live there when I was a small child. Right after my birth, I think, think it was something like the first eight or ten years of my life that I lived here. And if we fly over this, well, you get, and this is what they mean with plausible world, you get the idea of flying over a uh, urbanized area with a lot of uh, people living here. Now let's zoom in a little bit on this area down here because not surprising this is the neighborhood that I lived in for the first couple of years this is called Birkholm uh, and when you look at this area well you can see there's a large intersection there are some roads here's some blocks of houses and there's a lot of trees in there but if you look at the same area in Google Maps it is down here you can see that large intersection in here here is a uh, car dealer with a gas station and as you can see there's no such thing as a forest in here there's some buildings these are actually elementary schools here is a, a shopping mall uh, but none of that is displayed here in the simulator in the cost in the default scenery of x plane 12. again the road layout is correct you have that large intersection if you move at this road let me just uh, pull the screen side by side that makes the comparison a lot easier uh, let's see we are in the sim so this intersection is this intersection in real life if you move up this road you get to an intersection if you move up here and then to the right you get this dead-end street with the parking lot well that is in there but you can see there's a row of houses here and here and in here there's only one row of houses there's some trees that aren't there in real life so in terms of scenery it's a plausible world at a very low uh, resolution level in the sense that yes this is a neighborhood with just some housing um, but it doesn't reflect really what is there in real life now what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart my sim with X Europe installed and we'll go 
back to the same area here and then we'll take a look at the uh, difference uh, in, the, in the scenery layout. So I'll be back in a second. So here we are again, I just restarted the sim with X Europe and now we're going to look at some of the differences. This is the same scene, it's the same neighborhood, as you can see that intersection is down here. You have this commercial building which is a car dealer with a gas station, well that is down there. Um, you can clearly see that there's a very large difference in the uh, representation of the houses. Uh, of course in real life these are all terraced houses, um, that is not uh, displayed correctly in X Europe. Um, why is that? Well, every address um, is registered in the land registry and basically what X Europe does is it says hey this is an address so there's one house and then it just plots a house there but it cannot see that all the individual uh, houses are basically the same terraced house building. So that's the only thing that you will uh, notice that uh, X Europe does very very poorly. It cannot make a distinction between a single house or a terraced house or a semi-detached semi semi house. But if you look closely um, at some of the buildings, you can see that especially in this part, a lot has changed. And that's here in the sim. In the, uh, in the default scenery, we saw that this was basically just some woods and none of the buildings or the schools or the uh, shopping center were there. With X Europe, you can clearly see that this building is in here. You can even see that this round bit in here in this building is accurately displayed in the building with X Europe. The shape of the buildings is incredibly accurate with X Europe as well as their placement. You can also see that there's like this grass playing field here that is now uh, displayed correctly. We still have the body of water surrounding it. This is water, but there's just that green stuff that's on, uh, on, on, on water sometimes that's in here. But this is just all water and you can clearly see that displayed in here. Um, we can also see that at the street that we were looking at uh, just a couple of minutes ago, eh, remember, we went from the intersection to the right, then to the left right, and then we had this dead end street with the parking lot, which is here. And this row of houses was missing in the default x scenery. With X Europe, there is a row of houses where there is supposed to be a row of houses. Now, these houses they look nothing like what it's uh, what it looks like in real life of course and i can demonstrate that because if we go to street view you can clearly see this is just gray bricks terraced houses and that's nothing like what you're looking at in here however uh, at some level this is accurate because um, this row of houses starts at number 89 and it ends on the other end at number 75 uh, and that's eight houses. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight houses. And if you look in the sim, it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight houses. So this is actually highly accurate. So the number of houses is correct. It's just not the type of building that is there in real life. But if you see eight houses in here, you can know for sure that there is eight houses in there in real life. That's how accurate this uh, scenery is. Which is a massive change, of course. However, what is not changed with X Europe is just the, uh, the, the landscape beneath the houses. That's still the same. Let me just get out of the street view. Back into the overview. So, for instance, if we move back to the uh, towards the airport, uh, let me just see. That's the other way around. Let's just see if we can find some buildings with specific shapes. Oh, here we have a nice one. This is the police station, and across the street there is this building with like this characteristic round uh, building. So let's just move down there. it's in here. As you can clearly see the shape of this building matches the shape of the building that is there in real life exactly. Now this is the police station, there's this street running past it. The shape is entirely correct. You can even see 
if you look carefully that this goes a little bit out that you can see down there so this is highly accurate and that's what X Europe does so it makes the plausible world a little bit more realistic it's still not uh, as real as it is in real life it's not a 3d picture of what's actually there but you get a much better um, feel for what the area looks like as mentioned before what you don't get is a change in the underlying landscape the terrain uh, where the city is built on so if we go here for the uh, highway entry you can still see that there's a huge difference in the sim with uh, what's that in real life so what i will do next is restart the sim again and then i've added orthos as well as some additional scenery for amsterdam airport and then we're going to, going to look at what the sim looks like with X Europe combined with ortho tiles versus the real thing. So see you in a bit. So now I've reloaded the sim with ortho 4xp tiles. Uh, this is a zoom level 17 tile by the way. Um, and as you can clearly see now we have a lot more similarity between the terrain below the uh, autogen. As you can clearly see, this is the uh, highway entry and exit, which is down here. You have this green field with this uh, significant stuff down there. Now you can clearly see that it is located in there as well. You can see this is exactly the same as that one as well as here. You have this distinctive field which runs with this curve. That is down there, so we can take a closer look, take a closer look in the simulator. As you can see, with Ortho 4XP tiles, of course, the um, the area that's below the autogen is just highly, highly accurate. It is ex basically the same picture that you're looking at. This is Zoom Level 17 Google tile. And if you fly over the world like this, then I think... For X-Plane, this is the most accurate representation of the real world that you can get uh, in any part of the scenery. Unless you go for uh, an area where there might be a complete um, a 3D representation of what is there in real life, actually. But that's not uh, very often the case, uh, actually. So, yeah, I really like this. I think it's really worth, uh, well, you can say it's worth the price because both Ortho 4XP as well as X Europe are completely free. Um, you can download uh, X Europe, by the way, from simheaven.com. Let me just put this on the full screen for a minute. If you go to simheaven.com, you land on this page and you can see with the newest updated files, you can see the top downloads, so X World Europe. And what is really important, you have to download both X World Europe as well as the vegetation uh, library. And X World America is also released now, that's new. Um, and in a few days or weeks, uh, X Africa, Antarctic, Antarctica, Asia and Australia, Oceania will be uh, released as well. So again, you can download uh, one of these packages, always download the vegetation library. And after you have downloaded it, uh, please read the manual carefully because you have to adjust some things in your uh, scenery packs file. Uh, I can display that in here. Let me just go to the custom scenery folder and then open scenery packs. So if I open this one, uh, what is really important is you keep your um, plugins, your airports, the landmarks uh, on top of the scenery packs file as well as the global airports. Below that, below the global airports, you put the uh, Simhaven uh, scenery. If you don't do that, if you put the, the X World, whoop, the X Europe scenery above the global airports, then all the uh, airports will also be displayed with the uh, Simhaven uh, X Europe libraries. And I just don't think they are the best libraries. I think the, uh, the global airports out of the box are actually really good in X-Plane 12 within the limitations of a standard airport of course but the uh, the depiction of the airports is highly accurate with the uh, normal global airports uh, pack 
uh, if you go below the uh, X Europe Senior, that's where you should put the uh, libraries. And below that, I'll put the uh, orthos. Uh, you can also put the orthos above the libraries. That doesn't make too much of a difference. But make sure that your X Europe Scenery is in here below landmarks and airports, but above libraries and ortho. That's really important. So yeah, that was what basically what I wanted to show you. This is what X-Plane 12 can look like with some freeware uh, add-ons. Um, of course, it's not all just hallelujah. Uh, there is a downside. First of all, uh, Axura will have a frame rate impact that is quite significant. And of course, that is down to the fact that the simulator has to calculate the exact position of each and every building that you see. And not only the position, also the overall shape has to be calculated. So there is quite a significant um, uh, frame rate loss. Uh, let me just see what I get here right now. If I put the data output on, I get like 28, maybe 30 frames per second on my machine, which is actually quite a decent rig. Uh, I have an i9 12900K uh, uh, CPU, I have an RTX 3080 Ti GPU and 32 gigs of RAM. It depends on which uh, direction you are looking, by the way. Uh, as you can see, if I move in this direction, it's about 30, 32. And that has got everything to do with the amount of build-up area that is uh, below the horizon, because the sim has to load in much more. As you can see right now, I'm turning west, so the C is over there, and then it goes up to 50, 53 frames per second. But if I continue turning, and I start looking in the direction of Amsterdam, that's when it plummets down to uh, 25, 26 frames per second. So that's just to show you the, the impact on performance that this package has. Now, on the other hand, if I look at my graphical settings, uh, I've got everything maxed out right now. I still have to look into that. I saw Q8 Pilot uh, has uploaded a video um, with uh, with some display settings. I have to look into that and uh, set some uh, adjust some sliders. But with uh, Cloud Quality Max, Shadow quali Quality Max, the rendering distance at max, and the world objects density and vegetation at max, uh, this is what you are looking at uh, at the rig that I just uh, described. Uh, so there is a quite a significant uh, impact. Uh, in terms of uh, hard disk space required, the download for X Europe is, I thought it was roughly nine gigabytes. And if you install it, it's, it takes up about, uh, I think it was somewhere between 18, that's one eight and 20 uh, gigabytes of hard disk space. So that's quite significant. Uh, and of course, if you go with the ortho uh, tiles, uh, be prepared for a zoom level 17 tile that is uh, actually quite large. It can take up up to two, maybe even more than two gigabytes. But it depends on the zoom level that you uh, that you apply. So uh, I have lots of ortho because I just love to sim with ortho. Um, yeah, there are some areas that I fly VFR, especially in the Netherlands. So I've got those in zoom level 17. Most other regions where I usually fly into are zoom level 16, and there are some areas like southern France that I basically only fly over and never land. And I've got those regions in zoom level 15 to save significantly on the hard disk space. Zoom level 15 is sufficient if you use that area just to fly over at cruise altitude. If you start to fly lower, zoom level 15 is not too nice. Zoom level 16 uh, looks a bit better, and of course, if you're really low, zoom level 17 is the zoom level that you are uh, looking for with uh, with ortho. Um, but yeah, but that's it, and that's basically what I wanted to show you. Um, the only um, comment that I can make, or the suggestion that I would like to make to the developers of either X Europe or uh, Laminar, I don't know whose autogen buildings these are, but I guess they are from SimFN and it is uh, X Europe. I would personally love to see a little bit of uh, physics-based rendering on the buildings. Now, I completely know and understand that that will come at an additional uh, frame rate impact, probably, but I also think that it will really enhance the look of everything, because right now that's the only thing that I don't really like about this is I think it looks a little bit cartoonish uh, in a way 
and I think uh, adding some PBR on the autogen might really uh, help to raise the visual uh, appeal of this uh, of this simulator. Uh, I think Microsoft Flight Simulator has done an excellent job in that. The uh, the autogen buildings in Microsoft Flight Simulator are just awesome. They they look very realistic uh, if you compare them with uh, with X Plane. So if I could give a suggestion to the developers to further improve either X Europe or X Plane, uh, I think that is uh, something worth looking into because it will certainly make the sim look much more realistic, much better. Um, yeah, and if they can do that in some way with uh, not too much of an impact, that that would be awesome. Uh, but I guess that's not possible. It will always have an impact. But uh, yeah, that that's what I would really like to see improved. Other than that, personally, I love X Plane 12. I think Laminar did an outstanding job. They uh, address certain uh, themes that they want to improve uh, in X Plane 12 over X Plane 11. Uh, those were uh, the weather system, the light in the sim, uh, some additional changes to the uh, flight dynamics uh, and, and they delivered on those fields. Of course many people are now just whining about the, uh, the scenery not being that great. Well, yeah, well that's just x uh, for now. And I think that I, sh and I hope that I showed with this video uh, that there are ways that are completely free of charge. Uh, of course you can always make a donation and I would highly recommend you to do so because this is hard work for the people who make uh, X Europe. Um, but yeah, I think uh, it's it's awesome what you can accomplish in X-Plane with freeware uh, uh, add-ons. And of course, you have to invest a little bit of time to download it. That's just uh, uh, basically just once and you have this. It, it gets updated every now and then. Uh, there's a certain interval. Um, yeah, but, but I think this is just... Uh, Especially if you're a VFR pilot, I would highly recommend downloading the X Europe or X America files to get a much, much better representation of the real world uh, in your simulator. Uh, it's well worth it, um, especially if you want to, you can uh, uh, orient yourself uh, at some buildings that, have may, that may have specific uh, dimensions or sizes or shapes those are depicted correctly in the sim it's just that the facades don't match with the with the real life um, for instance a very clear example that i can give you uh, by the way is when we go back to that neighborhood that we were looking into right here you have this building in here which is that car dealer uh, stuff and if you look here at the facade you can actually see that it is a car dealer it's that detailed but of course, if you uh, look at this building uh, in Street View, it looks different. Uh, that won't surprise you. So it's Opel or Foxhall if you're uh, British. Well, this is what it looks in the sim. So. No, it's not the building that is there in real life, but it is a building with the same shape and the same um, purpose as it has in real life. And I think that in itself is an accomplishment. Uh, this is, of course, the Netherlands. The Netherlands has very high um, quality open street map data. And that's the downs another downside of X Europe. It, uh, its success or its impact on the sim is highly dependent on the quality of the open street map data for the area that you're using it for. I know not every country in Europe has the same level of OpenStreetMap data as the Netherlands has. Um, so if you live in a region where there's very poor OpenStreetMap uh, data quality, then you will not have uh, a spectacular effect as you have in the Netherlands. But there's only one way to find out, and that's to download the package, install it, and start to explore the region where you live. And I would highly recommend to first do that with the default scenery, then install X Europe and then take a look again. Make some screenshots in both flights and start to compare those. And you will see that uh, there is quite a lot uh, yeah, that's, that's improved with X Europe. So I hope you liked this video. Hope it helped you. Hope it gave you a little bit of insight and it might have uh, convinced you to at least try this. See what the impact is on your system. Um, and well, 
all I can say is uh, happy flying and enjoy this. And yeah, again, this is what X-Plane 12 can look like. And I think that's not a bad picture. So thank you for watching. Hope to see you again another day on another video. And until that time, please stay healthy, stay safe and enjoy your flights. Bye bye.